Welcome again to section 6, which is solving compound and absolute value inequalities. This is the second video of section 6. The first video covered the compound inequalities. This video will cover the absolute value inequalities. First thing before we jump into new material is to do a little review. So I don't know if we remember this symbol here, the bars. Bars denotes absolute value. Okay. Do we remember what absolute value is? Hopefully we do. Absolute value is the distance from zero. So like on a number line, how far away from zero. So for example, the absolute value of four, on a number line, how, how far is four away from zero? Well, that's just four. Sorry. Another example, absolute value of negative 7. Well, how far is negative 7 away from 0? It's 7 units away. So some of you are probably going to remember absolute value makes all the numbers positive. So positive or 0, um, you're not going to have negative numbers with absolute value. So just remember, it's always the distance from 0. Second review concept is x is less than 3. So that denotes um, an inequality. An inequality. So on a number line, uh, it would be everything like this. So there's more than one solution. Um, all the x's that are less than 3 are going to be solutions, are going to be answers. So we're going to put these two together. So we're going to keep in mind this, this uh, concept of distance from 0 and then the concept of inequality. So we're going to look for a range of values. So there's two different inequalities that you're going to have. You're going to have less than, and you're going to have greater than. So we're going to start out with a simple example. Absolute value of x is less than 3. So what you're first going to do is you're going to change that to an equal sign. And then you're going to change that number to be negative. So on my number line, I'm going to have negative 3, and I'm going to have positive 3. Remember with absolute value, when we solved absolute value equations, you always had two answers. It's going to be the same thing here. You're going to have to solve inequalities that are more complicated than this, and you're always going to end up with two answers. Okay, so now these are going to be open circles. Now here's the tricky part. Each absolute value inequality is either going to be shaded in between or outside. So I need to pick a test point. I generally try to pick zero. So let's substitute in zero. I get the absolute value of 0 is less than 3. Absolute value of 0. 0 is how far away from 0? It's, it's on 0, so it's zero, 0 units away. So I get 0 is less than 3. Is that true? Yes, it is. So I'm going to shade everything in between. So this is saying any number between negative 3 and positive 3 will satisfy this inequality. Let's test one more just to be sure. Let's test 1. The absolute value of 1 is less than 3. How far away is 1 from 0? It's 1 away. 1 is less than 3. Yep, that's true. That works. Anything outside of negative 3 to positive 3 will not work. So 7. The absolute value of 7. The absolute value of 7 is 7. So I get 7 is less than 3. That does not work. That's why we do not shade the outside. Now, I know this is a little bit confusing, but you're just learning it, so stick with me for a few more examples. So that's the less than. In the greater than case, it's going to start out exactly the same. I'm going to change to an equal sign, so x equals 5. I'm going to change the number to be negative, and then I'm going to graph. Okay, these are both going to be open circles, and now I need a test point again. I generally like to pick a test point in between, so in between negative 5 and positive 5. So let's pick 4. The absolute value of 4 is greater than 5, so all I'm doing is substituting back into that original inequality. The absolute value of 4, well, how far is 4 away from 0? Well, it's 4 away, so 4 is greater than 5. Does this work? No, this does not work, so I don't shade in between. If I'm not shading in between, that means I'm shading outside. And you could test a point outside just to be sure. So 
like positive 10. The absolute value of 10 is greater than 5. Well, I get 10 is greater than 5. That works. So any number greater than 5 or less than negative 5 will work in this inequality. So what you should notice is that this graph looks like an OR graph. First graph we did looks like an AND graph. So for absolute value, you're always going to end up with an OR or an AND. So it's going to look like the graphs that we did in the first half of the video. That's why these two inequalities are in the same section. So that's our next point. In general, we're going to be solving absolute value inequalities by not really writing them, like thinking of them as compound inequalities. So in the back of your mind, you should be thinking that this is going to end up like an absolute value or like a compound inequality. Okay, so example number one, it says solve and graph. So we're going to start with the solving part. I'm going to end up with two inequalities or two equations. The first one is going to look exactly like the inequality looks. So I'm going to have that 4x minus 7 equals positive 13. Now my second one is going to be still the 4x minus 7, but this time it's going to equal negative 13. So I just make the number negative. And then I'm going to solve these like I normally would. So I'm going to add 7. I get 4x equals 20. Divide by 4, I get x equals 5. Second one, I'm going to add 7. So I get 4x equals negative 6. Divide by 4, I get negative 6 over 4. Those are both divisible by 2, which becomes negative 3 over 2. Now I need to graph. So looking at the sign of my inequality, they're both, both going to be filled in circles. So I'm going to have a solid circle at 5 and a solid circle at negative 3 over 2. Hopefully we know that's negative 1 half. And now I need to fill in a test number. So I'm going to pick 0 as my test point. So I'm going to substitute into the original inequality. So 4 times 0 minus 7 is greater than or equal to 13. Okay, well, 4 times 0 is just 0, so I get the absolute value of 0 minus 7 is greater than or equal to 13. 0 minus 7 is just negative 7. So I get the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than or equal to 13. The absolute value of negative 7, how far away is negative 7 from 0? Well, it's 7 units away. So I get 7 is greater than or equal to 13. Does that make sense? No, it does not. So that means zero is not a possible solution. So I'm gonna shade where zero is not. So instead of shading in between, I'm gonna shade outside. Okay, so that's the graphing. We still need to write our solution together. Um, outside, the graph, when the graph's outside, this is gonna be an or. So I have x, is less than negative 3 over 2 or x is greater than 5. So that's what this graph is. Okay, I know that's confusing. Definitely confusing. So we're going to do one more together before you guys do one on your own. So I have this absolute value of 3d plus 6 is less than 3. So again, I'm going to write this as two, inequa two equations. I have 3d plus 6 equals 3, and then I'm going to have 3d plus 6 equals negative 3. So just change the positive to a negative. And now solve, so I subtract 6, get 3d equals negative 1, divide by 3, I mean, backtrack, 3 subtract 6 is negative 3, so I get 3d equals negative 3, and d equals negative 1. Right side, subtract 6, I get 3d equals negative 9, and d equals negative 3. Okay, 
Looking at my sine and my inequality, there's no equal sign, so these are both going to be solid circles. So solid at negative 1 and solid at negative 3. Now I need to pick a test point. I can pick a test point in between or outside. It doesn't really matter. In between is going to be negative 2. So let's try that one. I have the absolute value of 3. Instead of d, I'm going to substitute in negative 2. Okay, 3 times negative 2 is going to be negative 6. So I get the absolute value of negative 6 plus 6 is less than 3. Negative 6 add 6 is going to be 0. So I get the absolute value of 0 is less than 3. What's the absolute value of 0? Well, that's just a 0. 0 is less than 3. Does that work? Yes, it does. That's true. That means I want to shade where this negative 2 is, since that was my test point. So I'm going to shade in between. Now, hopefully we know that this is an AND. So an AND is written as a double inequality, a compound inequality. My x in this case is between negative 3 and negative 1. So the lower bound is negative 3, the upper bound is negative 1. So hopefully you remember that from last video. The OR is written as two separate inequalities, the AND is written together as one. Okay. Let's flip the page. Here's one for you to try. So, pause the video and try example number three. If you're confused, you may need to go back and rewatch examples one and two, or at least make sure you look at the work. You should have a solution, so an and or an or inequality. You should also have a graph. Pause the video and come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. First thing that you should have done is rewrite this inequality. So you should have gotten 5w minus 3 equals 9, and then 5w minus 3 equals negative 9. And then solve. So this one will give you w equals 12 over 5. This one will give you w equals negative 6 over 5. Okay, now graphing this. Might be easier if we convert these to decimals. So negative 6 over 5 is negative 1.2. 12 over 5 is going to be 2.4. Just keep that in the back of our mind. Okay, so that 12 over 5 is about 2.4. So this should have been an open circle. because the original inequality did not have an equal sign. And then I have a negative 1.2, so that's negative 6 over 5. Okay, next thing that you should have done is pick a test point. So I'm going to pick 0. You could have picked any test point that you wanted. So I have 5 times 0 minus 3 is greater than 9. 5 times 0 is just 0, so I get the absolute value of 0 minus 3 is greater than 9. Absolute value of negative 3 is greater than 9. Absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So I get positive 3 is greater than positive 9. That is not true. So I want to shade outside in this case. I want to shade away from 0, 0. Or away from 0. So this should have been your graph. You should have noticed that this was an OR graph. So to write the lower inequality, I have x is less than negative 6 over 5. Or, to write the upper inequality, x is greater than 12 over 5. So that should have been your solution. So you have to remember, once you're here and you solve for your two boundary points, those are only your boundary points. That's not your answer. That's not your solution. Your solution should be an inequality. That's why I have you write this final answer here. This is your inequality part. If you look just at the two numerical values, the two boundary points, it makes it look like you only have two solutions, when in reality it's an inequality. You have a range of solutions. 
That was the first part of absolute value inequalities. The second part is going to be word problems. So it's going to be um, writing an inequality to depict some information. So looking at the first word problem, it says write an algebraic expression to represent numbers that are at least five units away from negative 10. Okay, so we're going to start this problem by drawing a number line. So draw yourselves a number line. So five units away from negative 10. So negative 10 is going to go in the middle of our number line. Okay, so five units away is going to go in both directions. So higher by five, one, two, three, four, five would give us negative five. Lower by five, one, two, three, four, five would be negative 15. And we want all those numbers that are at least five units. So five units or more. So that's going to be all of these numbers, including negative 5, including negative 15. So you should notice that this is an or. It's a compound inequality, and it's an or. So what, what we end up with is all those numbers where x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or where x is less than or equal to negative 15. So this is our answer. This is the algebraic expression I was looking for. Right now, pause the video and try the next example with the stop sign on your own. Come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. So you should have drawn yourselves a number line. So write an algebraic expression to represent numbers that are no more than two units from four. So four is going to go in the middle. Two units away, two units higher would be six. Two units smaller would be two. And it says no more than. So two units or less. So that's going to be everything in between. You should have noticed that this was an and compound inequality. So this time, x is all those numbers between six and two. So this should have been the compound inequality that you got. If you got something different, then you made a mistake. Now, moving on to our last example and some quick trivia. So the trivia to the right, who is the oldest man to ever have been elected president of the United States? So the oldest man to ever have been elected president is Ronald Reagan. So we have one more problem to do, and it's this problem to the left that says one more. So it says solve and graph. This problem will be your entrance slip to class tomorrow. You need to come to class tomorrow with this problem completed and all of the work. We will go over it when you come to class. Good luck.